show you how to make Creative Kiwi's baby foot applique and for that I'm going to be using my 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping, matching bobbin and threads, I've got some transparent monofilament 40 weight thread for the quilting, masking tape, my squizzers and my fabrics and batten cut to size. I'm also going to be showing you how to add custom text if you've got software to the left hand foot and if you have got an inkjet uh, printer then uh, you can print off a, a photo onto t-shirt transfer paper, iron it onto your fabric and use that on the right hand side so you get all the details including a photo in one. I've downloaded the, the zip file to my computer and I'm now going to extract it. So I'm going to right click on here, go up to my zip um, extractor, which is 7-zip, and then I'm going to choose Extract Files, click OK, and my files are now accessible. I do want to point out that this tutorial is not about teaching you to use your own software. I am assuming that you can find your way around the basics. This is to show you where to put text in and the correct way to do it so that you get a good reliable result every time. I'm going to open the file with all the different um, design files in it and I've just picked a foot I'm going to be putting the text on the left foot and I'm going to be doing it on a 5 by 7 um, hoop as well so these are the 5 by 7 ones they've got 5 by 7 next to the name and it really doesn't matter which one of these I choose because I'm going to be saving the output file again after I finished. So I'm just going to pick, um, I'll pick the PES one. Now you need to be able to view the information before you open it in your software. And the reason why this is important is because we need to make sure that the, the size that we save the file at is the same as when we started off. Now I've got um, a little Explorer plugin from um, Sierra Embroidery and it's a freebie. I will include the link in the video description below for you. And this will enable you to view files, uh, your embroidery files, as you would other files on your computer if you can't do so already. So the information that I'm looking at here is the dimensions here, which is 88.6 by 157 millimeters. Now, if we don't um, pay attention to that, some software will change the uh, size of the file without you realizing. So it's something that we need to check later on before we actually do our save. Okay, now that we've got that information, I can now open my software. Now, every software is a little bit different, but really and truly they all do the same job in the end. You'll need to feel your way around, get a feel for your software if you haven't done so already. So first things first, you're going to open your file. So file open. Then I'm going to go in where I extracted the files and I'm going to pick one of the five by seven left feet. So I pick that one and then I'm going to click open. And that brings it into my software. Now, if you're going to use this file again and again and again, you might want to give uh, to save it. So, file, save as, 
and I'm going to go up one so that I'm not actually saving it in with the original files and I'm going to put my sampler. So now that's saved that in my software's native file format. So I can go in and I can edit it again and again and again if I wanted to. The next thing we have to find is, or locate should I say, is whereabouts the text in here sits in relation to all the other color stops. So the first one at the top here will be my um, placement outline. Then this one will be my fabric and batting uh, stitch down. Then the fresh green is the stippling. And then we have the text. So once we've uh, created our text, we need to make sure that we put it in the same place as the existing text. However, we're going to be deleting what's already there. Now, if you're editing a file that's got no text, you always place it after the uh, quilting, so after the stippling, and before the backing stitch uh, goes on. So in this case, the backing stitch is the one after the text here. So it will usually sit between those two. Okay, let's get on with this. For the minute, I'm going to turn off the text. And it's a good idea to leave deleting this to the last minute because if you've got a lot of colors there, it's easy to forget whereabouts it is. So that's my little tip to you. So I'm going to click on this eyeball here and that will turn it off. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is create some text. So I'm going to go down to my text tool and I'm just going to click anywhere on the desktop here and it brings this box up. Now you have a, a choice of different fonts and all sorts and you can change the sizes and the spacing and everything else here. I would advise you to use a small one because it's it will the chances are it will scale up if you make it larger better than uh, scaling down. So the one that I've chosen is sans serif five millimeters which means that the uh, created height of the file will be five millimeters without me adjusting anything. So next I'm going to put some text in and I'm going to do that in this text box here. So I'm going to highlight what's there and then I'm going to give my baby a name. Now I will add that this is a fictional baby. So we're going to call him Samuel Winter. And for the minute, I'm just going to click on apply. And you will see that that text is really quite small. It's only five millimeters high at the capital letter and the L there. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to adjust that to eight millimeters. Depending on the font you choose, you might have to play around with it a little bit. Okay, so that looks a better size to me. I'm now going to drag it over just to test it out. And that looks reasonable. I don't want it too close to the satin stitching and I don't want it too close to this line here because that's where uh, right foot is going to join to the left and then there's going to be satin stitch over the top of that so we're going to lose a bit of this space and you don't want your satin si stitching sitting on top of your text so I prefer to keep mine just a little bit smaller and keep it clean and legible okay so now I'm going to add a date of birth so I'm still on my text tool I'm going to click on my desktop and up here in the box I'm going to write D-O-B 
and 1601.20. And where it says height in millimetres, I'm going to change that to 8 and click apply. And that's my date of birth and that will sit underneath there. So the next text I'm going to add is a time. So click on my desktop and into the text box and I'm going to write time and I'm going to put 1848. And once again, I'm going to change the height of the text and click apply. And that will sit under there. Now, one thing that I need to take into account here is when I get down here, it's quite narrow. So rather than write out weight um, and then put the weight in, I'm just going to put the figures in. So I'm going to have 3.1 kg and turn that to eight millimeters and apply. And that sits in there nicely. I'm going to turn this to 3D so that you can see how it's going to look. Okay, you can take your time to make sure that they um, are all positioned nicely and neatly. And I'm not going to waste too much time on that. But I am going to move that up slightly. And I am going to move that across a little bit more just so that in place I'm just going to go to my pick tool here it'll be a lot easier and like I say you can you can take your time and make sure that they're nicely positioned in the center Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the right hand side here where I've got the stitch sequence and I'm going to select all the text. And I'm going to change that to the same color as the existing text further up, which is Wisteria Violet. And it's number, number four here on my color chart. Now that's put that in a little group of its own so it's easier to work on and I'm not going to forget about it. Uh, I don't want it getting mixed up with the satin stitching which is this one here because I want it to stitch out sooner. Okay so I've got that so now I want to make sure that they're all evenly spaced. The, the, the gap between each of the text lines is the same so I'm going to come down here into distribute and I'm going to go to distribute vertically and that will put an equal distance between all the the text lines so that looks nice and neat let me just zoom that up so that you can see it clearly Okay, so next with our text, if you've got automatic trimming on your embroidery machine, you can add um, trims in. Now, I'm just going to select some uh, one of the lines of text here and I'm going to go into um, this little box here I, it's called fill on mine I don't know what it's going to be called in your software you'll have to have a look for it sometimes it's called commands okay and you have sew sequence then trim type and lock type now the sew sequence I have got set to left which means it's going to stitch from left to right and it's set to trim always. 
Now I'll show you what the problem with that is going to be. I'm just going to zoom up a little bit and I'm going to show where the commands are. And if you have a look, you can see little scissors over here, which means that it's going to trim everywhere where you can see a little pair of those scissors, which is going to take forever. And we don't really want that. To be honest with you, for a little bit of text like this, I would turn the trim off, unless it doesn't bother you, of course. So I'm going to select it all. And then where it says trim type, I'm going to select never and then click apply. Wait for it to do its thing. And then you're going to see here and there what looks like a line here and that's the jump stitches and that's where you would trim up with with just a pair of scissors. There aren't very many on here so I'm happy with that. Okay we're now going to put the text in its rightful place so I'm going to turn back on the original text here, select it and press delete and that's now gone. And we're now going to move our new text up and it's going to sit underneath the stippling on the fresh green here. So I'm just going to drag that up and it now sits between the stippling and the, the stitching that's going to attach the backing. You can have a look on the slow redraw. So there's our first line, which is the placement line. Then we've got our fabric and batting stitch down. Then there's the stippling or quilting, whatever you want to call it. Then our text. Then the backing fabric stitch down. And then there's the satin stitching. So we can be quite confident that that's going to stitch out nicely now. We've got one little job left to do, and that's to check the overall size of our uh, design. So I'm going to press Control A on my keyboard, and that's going to select everything. And then I'm going to go into transform. Yours might be called something different. I'm sure you'll figure it out. And then check the size is the same as the original. If it isn't, you need to change it to 88.6 by 157 if you're doing the five by seven. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We can now save it, file, save. And then we're going to generate our embroidery file format. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Then here I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it Baby Winter. And in here I'm going to select my machine format. You need to select whichever one uh, you need for your machine, of course and then click save. Now when I click on my um, uh, file where I've saved it, I can see that there's the file, the size is correct, the color sequence or the number of colors in the sequence are correct, and I'm confident that that will stitch out beautifully. That's all we need to do uh, from a software point of view so I'm now going to join you at my embroidery machine. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of wash away stabilizer and I like to pin around the top edge of my hoop to stop my uh, stabiliser being pulled down between the two frame pieces. So I take my pin, lay it across the top on my hoop, push it through and then just bring it back round. And that anchors my stabiliser.
Load the left foot into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number one which is your batting placement outline. Place your batting over the foot and then place your front fabric on top and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them. Load whichever colour you want for your quilting into your machine. I've loaded my monofilament for this so it'll be transparent. And then you're going to stitch round number three. Next you're going to stitch out your text, so load whichever colour thread you want for that into your machine and then stitch round number four. You're going to turn your hoop over and place your backing fabric over the outline on the back of your hoop and tape it in place. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to secure your backing fabric. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric and batting from both the front and back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over. Load your matching bobbin and thread into your machine and you're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the satin stitching around the toes and around to here. You're now going to free your foot from the stabiliser so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge of the foot. Take care not to cut your stitching. You now want to trim up um, along this stitch line here. Don't cut it, but trim as close as you possibly can to it because that's going to be your join line. that's your first segment completed. Load the file for the right foot into your machine and then you're going to hoop your two layers of wash away stabiliser again, pin it round the top edge of your hoop and then you're going to stitch round number one which will give you your batting placement outline. If you're just stitching the right hand foot as is you would now place the batting over the top of the outline and then your fabric on top tape it down 
and stitch round number two. I'm doing this a little bit differently because I've got to accurately line up the um, photo on this fabric to the outline. So what I'm going to do is place my batting down and tape it in place and I'm going to stitch round number one again. That allows me then to trim up the batting so that I can see the outline accurately so that when I place my photo over I can really get it in the right position. I'm now going to trim this up. If you're stitching um, the unaltered version of this then you can leave the trimming up for now because you you're, you'll need to add the backing so you're going to want the extra fabric around the edge. I can now place my photo fabric down. Now I know that um, the stitching of the sole area here is going to come to about here so as long as everything fits into this area I'm absolutely fine. I'm now going to tape it in place. And pop that in my machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure my fabric in place. Load your thread for the quilting into your machine. I've got my transparent um, monofilament thread in and then you're going to stitch round number three. If you're stitching the standard version, um, it's a boy or it's a girl, you're now going to stitch uh, colour number four and that's going to embroider the word boy or girl in the middle of the foot. If you're doing the photo version, then you're going to skip colour four. You're now going to turn your hoop over and place your fabric, your backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number six. You're now going to trim up the front and back excess fabric and batting. You're now going to pop your hoop back into your machine, load a matching bobbin and thread and then you're going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag all around this edge here and stop ready for you to add the previous piece to do the joining.
you're now going to align this foot to this one and you're going to sit this stitch line here over the top of this stitch line here and then we're going to pin it in place. Make sure you keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line. I'm going to put a little bit of tape just to hold this down. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to zigzag along this join here. After it's joined, you're going to check it to make sure that there's nothing poking through. If you're happy with it, you can then go on to do the satin stitch border on round number eight. If not, you're, you can unpick it, reposition it, and then stitch round number seven again. And it's well worth taking the time to line these up properly. So check your join, and if you're happy with it, you, you're then going to stitch round number eight. And that's our stitching completed. I'm going to turn this over now and we're going to free this from the hoop. All that remains now is to dissolve the wash away stabiliser from around the edge. So I've got a cotton bud and some warm water. And that's our birth announcement finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch long. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. Mm -hmm.